what I'm going to explain to you here comes out of this research report that I first did back in 2005. And it takes into account um, Reuters data, which for the most part is kind of the industry standard. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the Reuters RIC system, that's things like EUR equals or uh, GBP equals. The data in the study goes back to 1982 for most of the majors. Obviously, you exclude the euro because it wasn't created back then. The, um, the euro starts in 97. I believe what Reuters does is they backfill using the old ECU, the European Currency Unit, which then became the euro. That was the peg. Uh, uses a daily close, 5 p.m. East, uh, New York time. Uh, the, the crosses that I use are calculated because the, the data history, the traded data history, or the indicative data history doesn't go back quite as far. So I went in backfilled. But since you're dealing with daily, daily figures, it doesn't really matter that much. And I also did something to look at indices of the, the individual currencies by themselves. And I don't mean like the dollar index. Dollar index, as it's traded, as it's quoted, is roughly two-thirds euro-weighted and a little bit more when you throw in the Swiss. So you've got, obviously, a very high correlation there. What I did was it took an equal weighting for all the currencies. So the dollar index that I've calculated and that you're going to see the results of is based on an equal weight of the euro, the pound, the Swissy, the Aussie, the, uh, the Canada dollar. Um, did I miss one in the end? So an equal weight in there. And the, the performance is not all that different from what you see in the dollar index, as you probably would expect. But the idea was to try to neutralize out specific currency effects. So with that said, um, in terms of why there are seasonal patterns, you guys can probably guess at some. For most of them, I don't know. There's stuff that happens in April that doesn't really account for anything that you would instantaneously think of on the calendar. OK, beginning and end of the year, you can understand those. There's a lot of accounting issues, money being repatriated or not being repatriated. And certain things with different currencies based on when their calendar year is, like the yen, the Japanese fiscal calendar ends in March. So you see some effects around that. But there are some things that happen in the summertime in the Canadian dollar, for example, which I'm not a fundamental analyst. I'm primarily technical. So there's, there's some deep down elements in either the trade situation or capital flows that happen at certain times of year that I'm just not aware of, but they play through the numbers. And that's what, what comes out into this research. So I'm going to start off at the, the very basic level of what I took a look into. And this is just simple weekday. So today's Monday. What, is the, what does the market do? Today's Tuesday, et cetera. As you can see, you don't see a lot of variation from basically zero. And like I said, this is based on the dollar index that I, that I calculated. Yeah, Monday and, two, Monday and Friday tend to be positive days for the dollar. The middle of the week tends to be negative. But you're talking very, very small fractional changes. So not huge variation. And you know, for those who think in terms of efficient markets, that's about what you'd expect. Things start getting a little bit more interesting when you start expanding the time frames. This is the dollar as it looks like on a, on a calendar annual basis. So as you can see, there's a pretty big spike in January. Some of you may have already heard of this pattern, where the dollar is very strong at the beginning of the year. And like I was just talking, it's probably related to some of the repatriation and the accounting issues that go on in capital flow moving around the world. And it's contrary to what happens at the end of the year, where you've got November and December are not particularly strong. So there's stuff happening around corporations, multinationals, moving money around at the beginning and the end of the year that goes into impacting these things. But you've also got April and September, which aren't particularly good for the dollar either, which when you look at April, maybe you've got some calendar uh, counting issues from the end of the first quarter. You know, September is the beginning of the third quarter. It's a lot of, it's the time when more people, as people have been trying to talk about for this September, volume starts coming back in the market sometimes. Not so much this year, perhaps, but usually. So you can see here that there's, there's much more significant variance from zero in some of these monthly patterns. Uh, stronger certain times a year, not so strong other times. And then what I did with that was I took, I took a combination of the two studies. And I looked at what are the weekday patterns are 
on a month-by-month -month basis. So we look at January here, and you see a lot of green, because as we just saw, the January pattern in the dollar is strong. So we've got four out of five days of the week, the dollar tends to be strong, but most especially on Fridays. So for some reason, Fridays in January, there's a lot of dollar buying going on. Dollar gets bid up. Um, better than one-tenth of one percent per observation. So you're talking, and this is talking about data going back to 82. So you've got a significant number of observations here. It's not just some little crazy one-off sort of a glitch in the system. Now, having taken a look at the kind of the daily and the weekly, I decided to look at how the, uh, not on a week-by-week -week sort of basis, because you can get a little screwy with how the days fall on any given calendar, but I looked instead of first seven days of the year, second seven days of the year, et cetera, et cetera. So 52 periods throughout the year, starting on basically a, like a Julian calendar sort of count. So days one through seven, week one. Eight through 14, week two. So that's what you see in the bottom scale here, week of the year. So obviously week one, it's the first seven days of January. And you can see, similar to the pattern that we saw on the, day, on the, the monthly chart, January, so the first few weeks of the year, strong. It actually starts, if you look to the right-hand side of the chart, that pattern actually starts the last two weeks of December. So whatever the, the weakness that, that is in the market going through in November and into December tends to finish up midway through December and start turning as you get closer to the year and then really ramp up into the new year. And you can see, obviously, we've got some you know, negative patterns here where we roll back and forth between positives and negatives in terms of the overall pattern for the dollar um, throughout the course of the year. And I studied this stuff across all of the, the currencies. And the reason I, I kind of got into this was because I had noticed a pattern in Euro Yen, that it was doing the same thing roughly every December. I said, All right, and I traded it successfully. Um, so I'll show you some, some of the impact that this stuff can have. So we'll go back to the, uh, the, the weekday patterns as they are. And again, not a lot in here. And this is what it would look like if you traded euro dollar from 1999, from its inception, based on the dollar, dollar pattern on a weekday. So Mondays and Fridays are up days for the dollar overall. That means selling euro dollar and carrying shorts Mondays and Fridays. And the other way around, flipping it the other way around, you're, you're long Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's what this chart shows you. Net positive over the course of the 10 years or 11 years inclusive. But, like I said, there's a, you know, it's pretty jagged because you're talking about a system, in this case, that would be probably no more than 55% win rate and on the best of days. Maybe it's only you know, 52%. So you get a, the numbers work out in your advantage, but it's a tough ride to go through. And the patterns get similar. Here's what the Januarys would look like. Obviously, you've got less, less trades that would happen here. You're talking, you know, a couple of days over the course of 11 years. So, you know, what, 47 trades altogether. We're looking at a logarithmic scale. So you're not doing as many trades, so you don't have the kick. But obviously, you're looking at one month of the year where you can compound it and, and look at other months of the year, like the negative patterns that are taking place in November, December. Not all that impressive you know, four and a half percent gains. Now we'll look at what things look like on the monthly. You see a little bit better, not, not a ton. This, the, the equity curve here is a little bit smoother. 